And we are back, folks. Another edition of the Monday Morning Quarterback Film Study with Devin Gardner Week Five. That is brought to you by no one. By no Not one. Not Sully by sponsorship. Oh, this, this is city. pure. <laughs> this is pure just for the people. The hey, people. Hey, man. Ain't no problem with sponsorship unless you're using <laughs> footage that you do not own. Yeah, which we, we do not. We do not own the mm. footage. And so my wife said, why, do you, why are you always saying we didn't make no money off this video? That, that's not just me just, oh, just trying to, you know, garner sympathy. Not at all. That is Once strict. again, it's for the people. It's for the so people. So that we don't get this video taken down and right. you can get a chance to watch it. And to stay legal. So when yeah. I say this video is for the education, the edification, and the entertainment of you, the people, that is me making it very, very clear to those who own this footage that we are not using this footage for profit. It is a disclaimer. That's why I say it at the beginning and the end of every video. It's a disclaimer yes. saying we are not, we do not own this footage. We are not using it for profit. This is strictly for the entertainment, edification, and education of you, the people. It's the triple E. All right. It's just for the triple E. And there was, a, there was some E word that you used on the broadcast. What, what did you say? Mm-hmm. What, which one did you use? My brain just be going. Someone, I have someone no idea. Someone even tweeted about it. Said, can you use that on the Monday morning quarterback? You remember what it was? Ah, uh, yeah, I did see that tweet, and I didn't even realize I used that word. Let me let me look. Let me look. Huh? We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out by the end yeah. of this film study, Devin. But look, there are there are a lot of things. equanimity. Yeah, equanimity is good. Right. It's a place of calmness. Did you? So did you? Uh, you know, uh, because Amon uh, St. Brown has a brother named Equimenius. Equanimous. Yeah. Did you is was there some No, no, I got equanimity that word. I got that from Dave Chappelle. You know he had a special on Netflix uh-huh. called Equanimous, one of my favorites. I mean, okay. he's one of my favorites, of course. So okay. I mean, you know, he's so deep. You know, his jokes, we ain't just here for laughs. We get to learn <laughs> something too. So I like that's a, you know, we're not just here for laughs. And that's we're not right. just here to learn. We're here to get the whole cap uh package at this uh non not for profit uh <laughs> video recording of right. some ball. It is, it is strictly for you to people and yeah. to help folks get an understanding of there are aspects of this game that we on the outside, on the non player side, just can't get. Yeah. You gotta talk to someone who has been there to to really understand, hey, Iowa. No matter the year or the circumstance, you go into Iowa and you, you get a Iowa's W tough. by double digits, that's that's big. That's a big win. I don't know if you ever, like, you know, because there's so many distractions in games. You try your best. To, like, people to ex- ignore that part. That's kind of, it's kind of because, you know, the players go about their business so well and, and, like, don't let the distractions happen. But it's so many distractions at a college football game. So many distractions at a college football game. And then you add in the fact that Iowa Stadium is so conveniently built where their fans literally can reach out and grab your shoulder while you're in the huddle making adjustments. You're sitting on a bench. You're trying to make adjustments. They're yelling stuff in your ear. I mean, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, it's it's a thing. It's not everything, but it's something for sure. And and I think it was really something they were going – they were able to go in Iowa against that daunted defense and and kind of uh, make light of them. So let, let's sort of frame the analysis as a carryover from last week. Yeah. You know, we were talking about how J.J., from a maturation standpoint, took a big step versus Maryland. And mm-hmm. talking to some of the folks on the inside after the game, you know, I, you know, knee-jerk, you don't know everything. So I said, man, look like receivers weren't necessarily always getting open. Mm-hmm. Maybe they need to scheme some more guys open and talk to some guys after the game. And they were like, no, nah, that's, not, that's yeah. not the case. I mean, yeah, everyone could do a better job, but it wasn't the case that every time he held the ball or got out of the pocket mm-hmm. that – Guys just weren't open. Right. It was him maybe seeing something that he hadn't seen before and choosing not to force it. So that yeah. was progress. Yeah, DG. for sure. Moving to this week, it's actually it's weird as we say progress because we've never seen him force things a whole bunch. But from what we know of, of uh, in practice right. and different things like that, it is progress. Right. But that's and that's but we in game. He's not a repeat offender of forcing right. things. So and, we're so we're clear. And that is a very good. Uh, you know, distinction to make. Yeah. But they're talking about it from a standpoint of what right. they see of in practice. practice and what they've seen. Right. Absolutely. And so they are like, he didn't force it. That's great. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. He didn't force it. Thank God. <laughs> but you get so, but from one week to the next, you get to Iowa. Yeah. And he didn't force it in a different kind of way. Yeah. So instead of holding it yeah. or, or getting out of the pocket too soon, he stayed within the framework and was able to hit his check downs. Yeah. He did a good job. Like, and, and on, on Monday morning quarterback, I called it death by a thousand cuts. I mean, 
which one is better? You know, the one big knockout punch, or you just keep on jabbing away, jabbing away. And the way that we were able to play defense, and it, I think it was a lot more of the ineptitude of their offense. Uh, death by a thousand cuts was the way to win in, in this uh, in this scenario. So I think that he played well. Um, it's so funny. Matt Liner gave him an A plus, right? And so when you 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 think about it, like okay, he didn't do a whole bunch. How could he possibly give him an A plus? It's because of all those other factors of improvement, right? You get a chance to talk to coaches, and coaches say, hey, in practice, he forced things. Sometimes you want to see that growth. You see that growth, right? You see a person that's able to control the team and be a game manager. The one thing that everybody's saying he can't do, he just forces it. He, he takes too many chances. He can't be a game manager. Well, I saw some opportunities that he kind of were were iffy. They were hairy, and he chose to check it down and, and picked up yardage and, and possessed the ball and moved the ball. I think that's so important uh, that he's able to do that because we know he can make the big play. We've seen it. We know he can make the big play. But the question really truly was, can he be that game manager if that's what Michigan needs to win? And I think that he's proven it over and over again, and this was the biggest test for him. Yeah, so I know we were going to start out with a illustration, but let's just start off with a, with a check. This is not a lot to talk through. What is that? Let's start out with, with you know, just a – just a check down, and hey, man, you know this is this is significant in terms of growth. Oh, and maturation. of course, I love they, they. It's like a chess match, man. You just change the play over and over again. You're trying to get him to show your hand. He's slapping his hands together. They're not moving. But th- this is a nice job. He gets through, and and when you see the coaches copy of this, you there's nobody open. They found a way to get two guys almost on everybody. The field throw had two guys kind of splitting them into and sharing the responsibility. Uh, the uh, the dig, I think it was, or whatever, the, everything was covered. And he was able to get through it quickly, right? You see that walling off, the dig isn't there. You got the safety driving on the dig or the basic cross by the tight end. And so it's like, okay, this is nothing but flanker drive. They got us. Sometimes they get us. If they got us, then we need to make sure we get the ball to the back, and he does a good job of that. It's a minimal game, but like you said, I think it's growth. Mm-hmm. All right, so now, Devin. We, I mean, nobody, right? The shallow cross gets walled off by, by uh, was that, Jack Campbell? Jack Campbell walls the shallow cross off to cover four safeties, driving on the dig right away after he had already been held up by a linebacker. The outside throw is, is being covered. I mean, it, there's nowhere to go with the ball, and even the back is covered. You know what I mean? And he mm-hmm. finds a way to get to the back. I think that's growth for sure. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into a telestration. And so one of the things that we talked about, last week, Devin, was him seeing some some coverages for the first time. And, yeah. And, and them doing a good job of bringing something that they haven't shown on film yeah. and, and even hiding their disguises, too, and kind of kind of giving a young fella, a young guy, uh, a look in the game that maybe he wasn't expecting. Yeah, for sure. And so this one, this is this telestration is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot on here, but uh, you, you – Iowa, for the longest time, they've done it forever. They, they're a cover four team. Uh, they play some cover six, cover two high, which we're going to explain right now. You're going to get a chance to see uh, the difference. And they they do a good job of disguising, right? They always have like a veteran team because their players don't go and, and just leave in three years. Or usually they don't play right away, right? They they stay in, in the system. They learn the system. And so by the time they're senior juniors and they got guys playing out there, they know exactly – they know like the back of their hand, and that's why they can play so well because they grow their guys up. And I think that's something that Iowa does that's really good. Uh, they need to figure out how to do that on offense. But mm-hmm. on defense, they do a good job of growing their guys up, and so that's why they can play such sound defense, especially in the beginning of the season. Um, and and here you get you get Iowa's defense in the beginning of the season versus a, a young quarterback that, that's never gotten a chance to play them in this capacity. And you, you see the coaches, he's going back and forth trying to get the right play called. And, and they get a play call, right? So you got post wheel at the top, right? That's your number one. It's kind of like Oops, that deep that. post and the dagger, right? Mm-hmm. The deep post and dagger, you kind of assess it. That post wheel, you kind of assess it based on the coverage. Will I be able to have it? That would be good. And 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 I'm just telling you, you can pause it when it pops up. As a quarterback, when post wheel is called, I want to throw post wheel. Mm-hmm. I love it. Everybody loves throwing post wheel. Like it's the like the, all the the rave. All these little league coaches in America, they think they're geniuses because they think they found out post wheel. Like post wheel's been working for a very long time, right? It's just that now you figured it out and they they beat it to death. But it's still always open, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody loves post wheel, right? So that's your first read, but it's more of a, a set because you you got the shallow cross coming and that's a good play, right? So you got one to two to the shallow cross and then you got the the hank or or the sit route. Uh, over the ball, essentially, by the tight end. So this is a very good play. One, two, three. And what you're seeing here is a, it's kind of a, a triangle, right, where you have a triangle, 
in his reads. And and I and from what I've watched on the film, he's very comfortable high to low, and he's very comfortable in this triangle scenario where you get people in different spots where you know where they're going to be. They're they're going to occupy that area, and it creates like that triangle that you can see right there. And so what Iowa did on defense is is really cool. So leave it there. It's cover four, right? It looks like cover four. As far as I'm concerned, I'm the quarterback, uh, and I'm pretty sure the coaches as well because uh, they might have saw something that maybe J.J. didn't see. But it looks like cover four right here. And in cover four, the adjustment to three by one, right? Three receivers on the on one side, one receiver to the boundary and on the offensive formation. The adjustment is for the backside safety to eye number three. All right, and I drew up, and you recorded me, I drew up kind of mm-hmm. a, a deeper explanation of it. But it's essentially – So uh, I'll, we, I'll actually – for. This comes in right here. You draw it on the board. Here's Devin sort of explaining it mm. on the grease board. Yeah. All right. One, two, three. Uh, receiver over here doesn't matter. Cover four. All right. Safety, safety, corner, corner. What they doing? They're pressing the corner, right? So he'll have a fourth. he have a fourth. he have a fourth, right? He will – it's the adjustment that the defense makes. They backside eye number three, right? So even though he has this fourth right here, He's going to sit, turn, and, and watch number three just in case they run all go, right, where this guy get across the field. He can rob him right away, you right? What they did is not cover – it's not – it looked like they were going to do it. They disguised it, and they went four safety, four this safety, went two, and then he come up, which is four plus two equals – Six, right? So you call it mm-hmm. number six, right? Quarter, quarter, half, mm-hmm. right? So now the safety's removed. When this guy get across, he can sit down, and now you can get the ball in there, right? That's a, that's a good job because at the beginning, they disguised it. It looked like he was about to eye number three, right? You see it all the time. Then he doesn't, goes to two. You can see these guys are lifted, so the post wheel is dead, and you get shallow cross, right? Shallow cross to the sit. Nice job by the shallow cross sitting in zone two, but he liked the, the Hank over there better. All right, right, here you go. So that that's that's kind of what it is, and, and no, that's not kind of what it is. It's exactly what it is, <laughs> uh, and, and it's to deal with that 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 th- third receiver coming across the field. What they don't, what, what JJ doesn't know, is they're not going to go to that. It looks like it, you can see the safety's even cocked to give the appearance that he's going to do that, but they don't. They they stay in cover four to the field, right? Which everybody is lifting, the coverage is lifting, and then they go two on this side, right? And I, I drew it on the board. Two plus four equals six, and that's why you call it cover six, or some people call it quarter, quarter, half, right? Quarter, quarter, half, mm-hmm. and the safety's playing half the field, and so if the safety's going to half, right? Safety's going to half. It's going to leave that that sit route by the tight end wide open because he's taking that area that's being vacated in that triangle. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And and because it's zone, you can still get it to the shallow cross, but you're gonna have a guy sitting outside and it's gonna be a little more hairy, I think. I think that the the play here is the third read, which he got to fairly quickly, and, and it's I think this is a really good job. See, eyes, the eyes and the wings and the helmet mm-hmm. tell everything. Very good job by the shallow cross. I think that's Ronnie Bell, if I'm not if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. Oh no, maybe it's uh, C- Cornelius Johnson. It's a very good job yeah. of him recognizing zone and not setting himself up to set the young quarterback up. Right, we'll keep mm-hmm. running through the zone, and it's a guy sitting outside, and then you're enticing the throw it to you, and now you're dead. Right, <laughs> that's the end of your football career there because mm-hmm. you just got destroyed with, with that uh, cloud or or flat or hook to cl- hook to curl linebacker or nickel, mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. Um, but this is a very good job of getting through his reads, recognizing the coverage, and like you, like we said last week, I'm sure he hasn't seen this just yet. Right, mm-hmm. the team, the game that we've watched, we haven't seen a uh, lineup and, and four special. Look like you're covering the backside. I know he knows the coverage, I would imagine, but we haven't seen them kick to two and go to four. I mean, this is this is a good job of, and it gets there so quickly, right? You you know he knows what he's doing because the premium or or the one you want to throw is to the field, to the wide side of the field. You know that you can see that, right? But he gets through his reads. You can see him go to the 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 shallow cross that ended up being a sit route because of the uh, zone coverage, and then getting to the tight end. Now, I don't want to give him too much credit and say that he knew when it went to six that he would get to the tight end. I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. he did. But if he did, that's great because the tight end goes right into the area where that cover four safety would have been to meet him. But because he's now a cover two safety on that side, you know, it's 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 a good. It's really good. Uh, I think that's very impressive. And I think that's growth. And and being able to know where you're going with the ball, have a plan, and, and execute that plan is, is always great. Yeah. You explain that. 
like a true teacher. My I man. mean, I try to teach. You want me to <laughs> preach again today, don't you? I can feel it. It's like, no, I'm kidding. But yeah, you know, I, you know, I work with all the young quarterbacks and stuff. So I've learned, you know, how to, you know, when I was in Japan, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, when I was in Japan for those two years, I was teaching kids that don't speak English football, right? You know how hard that is to teach a, and, and not like kids like 12, I mean, a couple mm-hmm. kids as well, but like little kids, like seven, five. So they're in the embryonic stages of even learning Japanese. So you mm-hmm. know the English is trash, right? They have no right. idea. Right. And, and so now I got to try to find words and, and, and body language and different things like that to help them understand. And that's really helped me to coming back here and speaking to kids that are that age that speak English and now being able to teach on, on broadcast and, and in this setting. All right. So let's go to a, a sequence of plays that you wanted to get to, starting with this out to Roman here uh, first. All right. First so pause it. Pause yep. it. Uh, we're not going to – we didn't put – Telestration, everything counted. But I want you guys to count the box, right? That's six guys in the box. Six guys in the box. And you got five linemen, right? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Five linemen. Or is that six? That's six linemen. Uh, five linemen and tight end, right? Mm-hmm. Five linemen and tight end, plus a plus a running back, plus the quarterback and run, right? So what's that math? That's five linemen plus one tight end is six, seven, eight. You got eight versus six. Why can they continue to have eight versus six? Well, because of plays like this that everybody looks at is like, oh, it's just a little quick out. Anybody can do it. You know, whatever the case may be. No, you have to play width and depth, right? So they can't add this alley player into the box because this ball is going to get thrown outside of him and watch what happens. He doesn't, he doesn't add in the box. He just doesn't move, right? So and because he doesn't move, he's beat and out leveraged right away down to the bottom of your screen. Like, look at that. Look at the space you have, Right. So that's a pass play. Imagine when we run the ball. Why do you think we run the ball so good? Because the threat of the quarterback running as well as the threat of throwing that ball outside. And who wants to just give up a free seven? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to just give up a free seven on first down. Nobody wants to do that. So now it opens up that box and makes it super loose for for Blake to get down and do his thing. All right. So now we go to the second one in this mix. And you get to a miscue. Yeah, a miscue between. But it's, a, it's a combination of a, a miscue. I think, and when we talked about it, you said, "Well, who's wrong?" You know, Sam mm. was so argumentative. He want to know not. who's wrong <laughs> here, right? And so for me, I said they're both right and they're both wrong, right? And that sounds weird. How can they both be right and both be wrong? One it wasn't a turnover, so it's good. But the thing is, you got you got a uh, pause it. You yeah. got a, a a kind of a. Take two or clear out by the by the uh, uh, post kind of uh, route by uh, Cornelius Johnson, and then you got that slow play, so play up the sideline, up the sideline by uh, uh, Ronnie Bell, where it's the it's the bubble coming around. You can see the uh, Roman Wilson with the bubble coming around the bottom of your screen. So you got kind of a, another what. Another triangle type of read that's kind of the playoff of the play, right? We throw bubbles all the time, and, and this is a pass play that they've kind of designed to look like this, and you're going to have Ronnie Bell slow play up and, and go pass. So, once again, I think he's very comfortable in this triangle scenario where, where the plan is set, and you, and you know exactly what you want to do and what your options are. Uh, and here, uh, pause it right there. All right, so at that position, I'm going to tell you what the quarterback's thinking. The quarterback's thinking, I'm going to drive this ball about at the 15-yard line at the back of your helmet, right? Hold shot. We're going to see it later. Hold shot where you hold him inside uh, 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 before, the sa- uh, before the safety and after the corner, right? That's what the quarterback is seeing right now. For Ronnie Bell, what he is seeing is almost not quite flat-footed, but almost flat-footed safety or corner, cornerback, almost flat-footed cornerback that I'm going to be able to run past, Right? So at this point, and this is where reps continue to get reps, continue to get reps, and continue to get reps, and continue to see live action, full speed, because it's tough to see this type of thing versus a scout team. That's why scout teams are so important, right? It's tough to see this versus a scout team because you, the scout team player doesn't know this guy. He doesn't know how he's going to play it. You know, they just know what they see or or can try to guess what they see. And you know, as we, we talked to Coach Parker, uh, well, I talked to Coach Parker uh, with Iowa, because I was trying to figure some things out. Like, hey, what are you doing here? And he's like, y- you, people will never be able to figure it out. You understand that? So you can only hope to know what they're doing. The the It's so in-depth, like the way that they're playing. That's why it's so important to, to, to note that they have their guys and they grow them up, because you can't play this type of football, right, if you got young guys. You just mm. can't do it. It's a lot of reading, a lot of moving parts. And so you can only hope to mirror what Iowa's doing. You might never truly know what they're doing. And so for for this – 
It looks like this corner is is the cover four corner, but just got his eyes in number two, right? He's taken in a little bit by Cornelius Johnson, and he's kind of late to respond to Ronnie Bell. For me, if I'm if I'm the wide, I play both, right? So mm. at, at wide receiver, I'm running past him, even though I'm not even that fast, but I can run past him. He's not. He's too low. I'm running full speed. It's science, right? He's sideways, and I'm already running full speed. He's sideways, just collision with my partner, with my teammate, and not really truly moving, and I'm running full speed. I'm running past him. And so that's what I'm thinking as a receiver. But as a quarterback, I'm like, I want to get you the ball as fast as I can, right? And I see you in that hole, and I got the arm to do it. I'm going to pin you on the sideline. So it's just a miscommunication, and I, and I think that's something that we continue to get figured out with reps. All right, so here you go as the play finishes. You see that? Mm-hmm. Like there's a space down there for Ronnie Bell to greet that ball, but, you know, the quarterback thought otherwise. So, like I said, I think they're both right and they're both wrong. And 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 what will make them both right is just getting on the same page and knowing what, what each other is going to do. But you have to realize, Ronnie Bell, first of all, didn't play last year. So, has he even ever caught a ball from from from, from uh, J.J. before this year? He didn't uh, catch a ball from him, No, right? he didn't. No, that's right. Yeah, because he got right. hurt again. He didn't catch a ball from him until this year. So, there's no way he's going to be able to be in, in any of the receivers, essentially, to be in these scenarios and know what my quarterback wants or the quarterback to know what the receiver wants. You know what I mean? So, it just takes time and reps, and they're going to figure it out. And, and I think that uh, th- his ability to throw that ball to the outside of the field, outside the numbers, is so important because it opens up the defense. Yeah, so that is a great segue because – Sitting watching this game, and I know if I reacted to it, you had to be like, "Damn!" Yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a quarterback, when he hit, first of all, he well, no, that ain't that ain't, that ain't the next play. But yes, you're right. I, 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 stop <laughs> oh, yeah, giving, yeah, yeah. You stop got giving more, stuff first. You got one more play. Would you that just you slow down. Yeah, you got one more play. Would you you pump your break, Sam. All right, so yeah, let's let's get to that. This is my bad. Uh, you right? All right, there, so there here it goes again. Right, so these it looks like it's it's a it's six again, but. I know to the field, it's a retreat coverage, right? Whatever the case may be, to the field, it's a retreat coverage. So uh, you're going to get Ronnie Bell, I mean, not Ronnie Bell, but Roman Wilson on that flat route again, right? But the corner who has seen it a few times, second quarter, right? Few, some, sometimes going by the second quarter, he's seen it a little bit. He's going to retreat, right, with the vertical. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to react to the throw and hit Ronnie Bell. I mean, not Ronnie Bell, uh, Roman Wilson, mm-hmm. right? So he's not a flat defender. So, you know, man, you're throwing him into danger. No, no, no. He reacted and went to go get it because he's seen it too much. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you get a corner, right, look at that. Is that the same corner or not? He was nosy before. Ronnie Bell thought he could run past him, right, because he was nosy. And then he's nosy again, which he he gambled this time and he won. Okay. Let's see if he won the next one. And yeah, so here's the thing, man, that you – Right, and people say, oh, Ronnie Bell's wide open. Well – I'm reading the coverage, and I'm getting this ball out quickly. If I got a retreat corner, I'm throwing it to the flat right away. He does that, and and the the corner played him. That's fine. We'll get you back. Mm -hmm. Right. Moving on to the next play is is where he gets him back. You know, and and it's it's a real. I think the shoulder roll is built into the drop and everything by the coaching staff, but it could not be. And and if so, on on this next play, he is he does a great job of influencing the corner even with it's not even an outright on the play and he still influences the corner that's why i think that he did it on his own there's no out route and he still influences influences the corner with a little shimmy to open up that space to put the ball in the hole i don't think joe clatt did this as a quarterback he didn't he, do it in justice he didn't do it enough he didn't do it enough yeah, right? i'm like man it, what, this is a but this is the throw he was trying to make to ronnie bell i hear you right that's the throw he's trying to make to ronnie bell and and this time he gets what he wants by making sure that he keeps that corner there because he's being nosy. The corner's been nosy. It's a different corner this time. But that's just how they play because they have so many moving parts and they read so much. When he saw that shoulder roll without even an out threat, he held just for a second, and now it left the space. I mean, not a whole bunch of space, though. He didn't leave a whole bunch of space to get that ball in there, but that was a very, very nice throw. It reminded me I, I had a throw like that. Except it wasn't nearly as good as this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember um, South Carolina? In the beginning of the game, we were kind of struggling, and I, I changed to a Denver. And Coach Borges is probably thinking, why did you even do that in the first place? I don't remember why I changed to Denver. I was, I, you know, the SEC, they were running fast. I didn't know what to do. So I changed to a Denver, which is double slants, right? I dropped back to the double slants, and it's not there. I think the cover suggested I changed the play. And it's not there. And I start to back out, back out, and I kind of throw it up to Jeremy Gallon, uh, and he jumps over two guys. It was no space to throw that ball. That's more Jeremy Gallon made this play. This is the quarterback. I mean, he drove that ball from the right hashes essentially 
all the way across the field or, or into the hole before the safety get there, and and in the corner hardly even hesitated. He hesitated. I think he might have hesitated more with his mind than he did with his body. And and just that small hesitation allowed him to get that ball out there. That and when I was talking to Coach Parker, uh, he those are the things that you can't. What what, what does the coach right. do on defense? You know what I mean? It's tough when you got a guy that can make that play yeah, because is, every quarterback can't make that play, and that defender is right more times than not. But on this play, he just a little bit too late. And hey, look, completion. man, against most quarterbacks, that safety can close. Against can most quarterbacks, that throw is not going to get thrown because they don't feel they, they, yeah. they don't think they can do it. <laughs> yeah, like that's a whole shot to the field, right? He's on the right hash, ladies and gentlemen. That's a whole shot. So the safety has what, 15 yards barely to get there and, and beat the ball there, and he can't do it. He's not even close. The safety's not even close. That was a right. He's off the he, He's in a dead sprint, and the ball holds him up perfectly. Nice, easy catch, and it's good to see uh, Andrew make that play. Um, that that's good stuff. And and if all the receivers can get on that same page, and the quarterback can be on that same page, and, and I'll, I'll I'll actually defend Ronnie, but I think that that ball should have been thrown over the head. And I obviously, like I said, they're both wrong and both right. But Ronnie, ben, I love what Ronnie Bell saw there because. He trusted he could run past them, and, and I thought the ball could have gone up top and go let him make a play, but it definitely could have won the hole, too. See, I know if Devin Gardner had been on the call, you would have been like, oh, my God. I'll make a big deal. I'll make a big deal. So, you know, it, I mean, it's all biases, right? So if a running back is called, if Fisher Tillman's calling the game, he's going to get excited about cutbacks and runs and different things. And I get excited about that, too, because I play with Denar Robinson. But uh, I'm a quarterback, right? So when I see a quarterback do something that – Either because I, I look at myself as a high like like arm strength. I had a big arm, an accurate, all those different things. When I see a quarterback do something that I in my brain I think, dang, could I do, could I have done that? Or or would I have been would I have enough courage to make that throw? That gets me going. Like oh my goodness, I might not have been able to make this throw. It's super impressive. So it's it's good to see. Uh, uh, and you know Joe is a little more seasoned, right? He's older than me, so he's a little more chill. I'm a little excited, <laughs> you know, a lot. So that's it's it's just differing, you know, styles. But uh, yeah, I would have I would have went really crazy for that. And, and you know, people always say like, oh, he it, because it's Michigan, he wouldn't know. What are you talking about? I don't even meet these kids sometimes. <laughs> and I, you would think I'm their biggest fan, which I am. I'm a fan of good quarterbacking and good football. And so I, I did Duke, Kansas. And I'm, like, going crazy over these two quarterbacks making all these throws for both teams. Obviously, the Kansas quarterback came out on top and was a little better, but good quarterback play is what is going to keep football elevating and, and is why we love it, right? I get it. Defense is good, and you keep saying defense wins championship, but, you know, a lot of offensive teams keep winning is what I'm saying. <laughs> um it's all, but you come to watch to watch good quarterback play. When you watch, uh, what was it, Justin Fields versus um, – uh, Trevor Lance, people were bored to death. What are we doing? I mean, obviously the weather, incoming weather and all that, but nobody wants to come to a game and just watch the quarterback. They want to see good quarterback play. And I think this film breakdown helps the viewer see the game in a different light. So even when it, it's not a thousand yards passing and throwing at every single play, they can still see good quarterbacking within the framework, right? Yeah, That's yeah. why you have That's to come here. That is a perfect point because yeah. it'd be very, when you could, when you can make throws like that, Mm -hmm. It'd be very easy. Like, man, I, I'm, I'm gonna do this all the time, and he resists the urge. No ego to do that. I keep saying it. There's no ego involved for the quarterback, and and it's kind of like I'm not calling this kid Tom Brady. Let's be. I mean, he's actually way more talented than Tom Brady. Let's be clear. <laughs> when they were in college at the same time, but I'm not calling Tom Brady as a leader even yet. But when you have a quarterback that has no ego, and and Tom Brady in New England for so long, he had no ego. Right, he allowed uh, Gronk to be Gronk. He allowed uh, Randy Moss to be. He allowed guys to have a little bit of ego. But when you're the top dog, the guy that's pulling the trigger doesn't have an ego. All the egos of everybody else are suppressed at least a little bit. Right, it's not as big as it could be. Right, the ego is suppressed. And so when you have an egoless offense and an egoless team, not eagle, egoless team, that that just lends for great success in, in a lot of scenarios where. You maybe don't people don't believe you should be successful, right? A lot of people are, are going to pick you to lose the game, and you you find a way to win. It's like, well, because they they've learned how to win in so many different ways. They have learned how to blow a team out. They learn how to run it down your throat. And the one thing we're going to continue to learn is is the quarterback capable of winning a game for him? And and I think at some point we're going to have to find out. 
Yeah, man. So, but he's a, showing all the clear steps to being able to do that. I don't know if Joel Klatt watches your Monday morning quarterback sessions. He should. He should he probably though. It, it, he got like two shows. To, to like he got out. he got Dr Pepper well, show. Like he got like another show. And then well, so I I'm apologize, Joel. Ah, oh, here we go. I gotta apologize. I'm not, I'm not ragging. Uh, on no, 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 no. I, no, not about that. Not, I'm not apologizing about that. He should have went crazy over that play. Thank you. I, I'm apologizing to Joel on on the thing. Because on the, you know it's not national I guess I mean I guess it's national people watch all the place. He was calling me before the Maryland game to like you know I don't know to talk to me about stuff to get those cliff notes. But okay. I, 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 we were playing phone uh, so, tag. So, we so back it was your fault. No, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, now on my breaks. You're taking it a little too far there. All right, all right. Take, a, so. take a take a break. I'm saying that I. But it was because I was busy when he called me, and then he was busy when I called him back. You know, it's kind of phone right. tag. And then the game here, I got a game. You got a game. We can't be – I don't have time for this now, you know. Right, so. right. So, but, well, well, for next time, Joe, this – Answer the phone. Basically telling me answer the phone. I know I know that DG – this would have been his reaction because I was like, what is man. This? That man, is. that's an NFL throw. I think. Yeah, that's that would yeah yeah it would have it would have been my reaction because it was a big-time throw. Because think about it. It's, a, it's even better than an NFL throw. Why, Sam? Let's see if you get a little trivia. The hashes. The hashes are much wider. Yes, sir. He's never going to be that far away from a throw. <laughs> he has never. If he, when he if he gets in the NFL, uh, let's speak it into it. When he gets to the NFL, he will never be that far away from the throw unless he runs outside. And if oh, the man. safety can't get there from there, <laughs> when he cl- when he far away, how the safety go get there when he? Come yeah. on, nah. that's nice. That's good ball. See, I would have tried to go into all of that, but the thing is, y'all got that much time, so hey, you gotta. Hey, hey, but hey, I would be like, hey Chuck, that's the uh, producer, uh, Chuck McDonald. Chuck, I need you to go back to that. Hey, I don't care how many plays go by, we have to go back to that throw. But yeah, I mean, yeah, different man. styles. Hey, this is just the kind of insight that you give to people on the Monday morning. That's right. Yeah. We don't want to give it giving in the game all the time because then they're not gonna come to Monday morning quarterback. You know? Oh yeah, they will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they will. still coming on. <laughs> they still coming. Even though. This film breakdown is not sullied by sponsorship, and they're still actually, coming. I love it. You know, I don't think sponsorship is sullying. I love sponsors, by oh, the way. Oh, I love I sponsors, love, too. But we just can't put them on here. But that's, that's but on here, it's sullying. <laughs> we don't want it to be sullied. You like that? You, you don't want it sullied by sponsorship. You know? All right. No, that was a yeah. So, a couple weeks ago, mm. you and Borges, y'all went back and forth like y'all always. I'm not going back and forth for him no more. <laughs> I'm not, because uh, I'm going to knock this old man out. Hey, he said, what man, is wrong with you, Borges? We're, we're, we're doing the thing. He said, tell Devin he's a slap. <laughs> like, what is that all about? Like, why are you just talking junk to me? Why do you even know how to use a computer? I said, I don't know what that is. You know what, Sam? I'm just telling you. I'm going to whoop him. So get your camera ready. <laughs> One day, he going to walk in here talking crazy, and I'm going to whoop him. I'm going to whoop him right in front of you, and you're going to be like, man, how you whoop him like that? That old man. I don't care. Right. All right. So a couple weeks ago, UConn game. Yeah. Right. And JJ gets out of the pipe. He, there's a blitz coming. Mm. He, he has, has a, he, he is protected. He is protected. He gets away from him. Yeah. Say, <laughs> check that. Check, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> check that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, stand in there and trust it. Trust it. Stand the fight. Stand the fight. Right. And you said, yeah, but. Yeah, but. He he should have stayed in there. But and then we showed the Notre Dame plays. You expecting this young kid who hasn't been in this situation just yet to stand here and take this? No, no, no. So you want to you want to say you want to show him Notre Dame again first? Or you just want to show him. You just want to keep seeing me get my head taken I off. Don't, I, I think don't. you really want to just Brother, keep I seeing me. I feel sorry for you. But here you go, Devin. Here's the play. Yeah, I mean, th- th- this is tough to ask of a guy who's in his what? What was it against UConn? Kind of his second start. Um, he, the first time he's really got pressure down the gun barrel. Right? You talk about staring down the gun barrel. You want him to just take that shot in the face like that on his first time. Now, obviously, as we go forward, you want him to trust it, continue to trust it. But he's not going to have that trust first, right? And so here goes uh, UConn, right, where I said, I defend him. I said, listen, he's wrong. He should not get out of the pocket so quickly. But it's tough to ask a man to stand there, right, when you see a guy running full speed at your running back. It's tough to do, I'm just telling you, right? We just watched me do it. I did it. But it, it was tough. It wasn't, it wasn't smooth sailing, right? What he feels is that guy's going to beat him, doesn't, gets out, makes a play, no harm, no foul. Will he learn from it? And I think he did. Moving in this game against all Iowa, right, right. it's daunted defense. Everybody said, oh, it's just UConn. Well, what about Iowa? Iowa's a very good defense. Yes, they are. 
He stays in the pocket, allows for Donovan Evers to cross his face, pick up the blitzer, and, and hits the throw. I thought that was a huge improvement. So small, right? Nobody's going to look at it. Nobody's going to see it. But you come to Monday morning quarterback, you learn these things, right? He's going to get linebacker right in his face. Never even moves. You see that? Trust it. And the linebacker actually got through. The linebacker actually got through and almost made a play on him, right? But he was too late because he stayed strong, stood in the fight, and trusted, right? That's tough to do, man. It's tough to stare down that gun barrel knowing so, that your linebacker and a linebacker and running back, which the linebacker usually should win, win is one-on-one. All right, so, brother, because I give Al Boyd just the opportunity, I'm, I'm about to give you the opportunity. What's that? We're going we, we gonna to go ahead right now. And give Devin Gardner the floor. So, what's your message to Al Borges coming off of that play? What do you have to Let say? Let me frame to, myself up. What do you right? have to say to Gorgeous Borges? Okay, Borges, you don't know nothing. <laughs> You're always talking crazy to me, like you bout it, bout it. Always talking. Oh, we don't want to hear the bob and shop. I'm just telling you, until you stand in the face of evil. With that ball in your hands and the hopes of the entire Michigan nation raining down. Don't you tell me that young man can't develop into a man that stays in the fight. That's all. Back to you. <laughs> I don't know. What What do you want from me? It's ridiculous. Hey, man. <laughs> raining down. Hey, man. The dude, hey, he said, let me get on the board. <laughs> man, he crazy. But he drew it up. Board, so I the thing is, one play. thing the board just did not say, he didn't say that he would, did he say that he would develop that? He, he did. No, he said, um, he said, he'll, he said he'll get it. But he said, no, I got to mark him down. I gotta yeah. mark him down for this one. Said, well, it was our mark first him down, down for a first down for completion. First down. Thanks, Borges. Said, I gotta minus him though. I gotta minus him. Yeah. So I didn't, great play, good so, play. But the thing is, it should have canceled out because he got a first down. So plus him. <laughs> plus him after the minus then. Let's go even. But but that's a, I think that's a that's an expected play, but I think that's a plus play based off of what he kind of experienced before. And that's a great job because this is the time to get out of there, to be honest, right? Iowa is the time to get out there with Jack Campbell, right? The mm-hmm. preseason player of the year on defense. That's the time to get out when you got these linebackers flying down your throat at, at Kinnick Stadium, and he doesn't. So right. I think that's great improvement, and Borges was wrong yet again. All right. So Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See, now he's going to come in here. The, 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 talking now, crazy. Now the key has I'm to I'm going to drop him. I'm going to drop him. I'm just telling you. Key. The man calls himself the key. He, he you can't give you yourself a nickname, Borges. <laughs> You know, Martel Webb gave me the name DG. I didn't just walk around and say, hey, call me DG. This is Martel Webb said, hey, DG. And he always tell me, remind me, like, you know, nobody ever called you that until I started calling you that. Like, you're right. It's just my initials. Not that creative. But you did. So you were the first person to call to call me that. Martel Webb, former tight end, University of Michigan. But, yeah, Borges, you can't give yourself. Like, Gorgeous Borges. He gave himself. Did he give it? No, I, no, think, he I think he was he given did. that. That's the one you rolled with, Borges. You ain't the key. You gorgeous. <laughs> Even though, you know, all right, so for debate. Let me let me bring this one up because, all right, a lot of growth and improvement, but there were there were some hiccups there, and this is one where you continue to make steps to improve on this. JJ McCarthy, I can tell you from having watched him now for five years, mm. is a really good deep ball thrower. Yeah. Just getting cal- recalibrated. To the strength of the arm and the right. recovery and all that. The thing is, if this is the only thing we complain about, I'm with it. Because I, as I said before, the fact that these shots are being taken, it continues to loosen up defense, right? And intermediate to, to, to short, he's about as perfect as he can be, right? He's not missing throws, even even little intermediate plus. This is deep, right? But intermediate, intermediate plus, he's hitting all those throws. And here you can see he's a little bit closer, just a little bit too far, and he gonna, he's going to have to find a way to get control of this. But if this is the only gripe that we really, truly have, I think that th- this is a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. It, but we got to hit these because it, against – you know who we're going against at the end, right? And even against a Penn State who, uh, they you know, they feel like they want to give the game away all the time, then they play well. You know, you don't know which Penn State team you're going to get. You you have to capitalize on opportunities to hit them big, right? Happy to cop Obviously, like I said, the fact that the shot are being taken and it's open and, and we just missed it, it scares the life out of a defense and it keeps those safeties out of the box in the run game. But you want to you want to p- get payment on the, a little more payment on yeah. you want those you want those deep throws to pay a little more dividends uh, and it, and it comes See, out in the form of touchdowns and completing them. I'm a glass half full dude because I'm like man, if we get that, it's over. Yeah. If Michigan gets the, the ability mind, to brother. really, really drive the <laughs> – like, now, the thing is, drive the ball down the field is, is like, 
drive he drives the ball down the field. We saw a whole shot 22 yards out. Like he gets the ball down the field, but it's just those deep 50 yard, 40 yard shots that like we talked about our low percentage. He's just not hitting them. But the defense is terrified of him. Because they it shows in how they play defense. They have those safeties removed for the box because they don't want that to happen. They'll take their chances with the run game. And the thing is, he continues to every time and Coach Sharon Moore and, and and Coach Weiss, they're doing a great job because it seems like every time and they had another shot call. Remember I said in, in Monday Morning Quarterback when he when he fell down, that was another shot. That was gonna be big play action, I think, and it was gonna be over the top, and they would have had it, I think, too. But he fell down and got stepped on. Yeah. Um, they're doing a good job of seeing because you know you got to look to the sideline. They're doing a good job of seeing the safeties low and getting to a shot. Yeah. Especially in the beginning of the game when it when it when the opportunity come, shows and, and and comes. So. Oh man. Oh, and, and listen, let's give those guys because I, I want to get back to this point to to, to kind of highlight something that mm. Joel Clatt when he came in before the Maryland game he was trying to get a feel for the play calling dynamic you, you don't have time to really spend yeah. but every program like that to really get into yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Into so, the depth of now it. the thing is he's going to because Michigan was going to be three weeks in a row on right. Big Noon so so, so he, he should now but yeah. at that point he didn't really have a who calls what play when and he yeah. was like they, it feels like they're out of rhythm yeah, I'm like yeah. man I don't see that yeah. and you and, but you really feel it in the run game because mm-hmm. in that game they one of the adjustments they made is they ran the one back power with the tackle put, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, you're getting the feel for it. It's like, give us yeah. a better angle on yeah. the play. It's like, man, that's a really good adjustment in this game. I was saying, so then then you see how they that last drive of the game, mm-hmm. they do on the, to death. Yeah, of course. That's hey, that's the go-to when it's when it's time right. to finish. It's, it, we call it winning time. Right. When it's winning time, so, they're going to do them to death. But they started the game out mm-hmm. with a duo. They had, it was the run du jour last week. Yeah. It was the big play against Iowa in the Big Ten championship game. They come and start out the game that way, right? Mm -hmm. But the other thing Iowa did in that contest is they were killing Michigan's counter. Killing it, Dev. Because you got those big linebackers that they don't truly take off the field, right? They leave linebackers on the field and have guys that are kind of tweeners that can play be linebackers in the stay in the pass game when they when they when when Michigan goes to the three wide receiver, four wide receiver sets. And and they spill those runs so well. All right, they spilled over run so well. That's what Iowa does. And so the thing is, find a new flavor and, and they were able to right. do it. Right. And so what 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 Gaddis did in that game is he he ran it like four or five more times. It didn't do anything. Hit him with a flea flicker mm-hmm, off of it mm-hmm. at the late in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Michigan first drive of the game. It's the eleventh play of the drive. They call a they call a counter reverse. Mm-hmm. So they give you four everything touchdown. that looks like counter. Yep. Schoolmarker pivots in the backfield and and it's like and now those linebackers can't sell out, right? They can't. They the the defense line have to be more honest. Everything backs out all that, and it holds guys so that once again the middle of the field in the running game is is more open. So while people might they was they were killing the play call in the second half, and and and, and in spots they shut it down a little bit. Yeah, it, they it, shut it down because the thing is for me, and you have a young quarterback, right? He's shown that he can handle it, right? He's done well in this game. It's not a whole bunch more we need to see, right? The only way, because the, the off, I, I was offense just couldn't do anything. The only way they can get back in this game is if we give them awfully good field position, right? Because of turnovers, big sacks, or whatever the case may be, or we give them the ball back and they score on defense, right? Which is what Iowa, especially early in the season and this year, they've really made their bones about scoring on defense to help their offense win the game, right? And so at this point in the game, it's in the second half. There's no way Iowa can win this game unless. Michigan turns it over or whatever. So I, I don't understand the infatuation with putting your quarterback in harm's way or or putting uh, the ball in harm's way with different types of play calls. Now, they did still throw the ball, right? They still threw the ball. They still made some completions, different things like that. But I don't see the infatuation with wanting to be so extravagant when the game is won. You win the Kinnick, and when is the last time Michigan win the Kinnick and won the game? And you're going to win this game. You just can't mess it up. And I think they did a great job of of controlling the game and not messing it up. And and obviously the defense gave up a, a, a drive late late at the end, but the game's in hand, right? And so mm-hmm. I think that, that was more, it was more shutting it down and making sure we get out of here with a victory. We've seen what we need to see from our offensive line and running backs, and there's more opportunity to run it down a, guy, a team's throat. And from our quarterback and our receivers, we don't need to see much more. It can only be danger. And so I think that they shut it down just a bit and, and, and finish the game, which is great. All right. I mean, so, 27 points. The, the Iowa def, Iowa's defense had given up 25 the entire year. Listen, right. And and Michigan hadn't won by double digits in, in Iowa City since 1994. 
Yeah. Man, were, you, were you born yet, Dad? I was born in 91. Don't play me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, hey, you know, I, I was listening to the broadcast when I was watching it in the in the room with uh, Mike Pereira and stuff, and they said Michigan hasn't uh, beaten uh, this team by two touchdowns, something like that. And I'm thinking, hold on, not Chief. I remember blasting Iowa, but that was at Michigan. Yeah, right, 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 right. You see they showed the flashback. Chuck McDonald, I think Joe hates my guts. They always showing a flashback of me getting done up. <laughs> and like, come on, man. Stop showing these flashbacks of me. Look, cause, you know, remember we went to Iowa. Coldest game in the history of football, by the way, uh, and we 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 was twenty one nothing at half, and we came out and and I, I actually don't even remember what happened. Like <laughs> I remember it being freezing cold, and I couldn't handle the ball very well, and that's mm-hmm. on me. Um, but I it just it, it all. Th- remember, you know the book things fall, things fell apart, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was whatever. But it's tough to do. It's tough to go in there daytime, nighttime, whatever the case may be. It's always cold. It's always a, 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 a an electric electric atmosphere. Not to mention the guys right behind you talking with their beer. You suck. What, what the what the hell are y'all doing out there? Y'all terrible. Yeah, the difference yeah. is with it, getting a three score lead on this Iowa team is different now. They they still give them credit. They, they still made it. They still fought. They still made it a little I, interesting. I, I think they did a good job of putting their guy on the move because they have they have Beatrice and Padilla. I think it is, mm-hmm. and Padilla is more of a runner, right? So they do more naked action and different things like that. And to me, I think they're equal as passers. Even though the the uh, Beatrice started to make some throws, I think they're at least at least close enough that the the legs of Padilla uh, give you a better chance. I'm, I, that's just what I see. Especially I saw him last year. I just think that Padilla gives you a little better chance because he can move and you're getting not much from your quarterback anyway in the passing yeah. game. Now, they did start to put Peters on the move because I think that he actually can do some of the naked stuff. You're not going to get as much if they cover it and he has to run and stuff, but he can get on the move and throw on the run. And so they started to do some of that and started to move the, the ball just a little bit more. I think they really have a decision to make. I would, in my opinion, after seeing them both, I uh, saw Padilla last year and, and watching the film of him last year because I had him at the end of the season last year. I think that you, you don't get enough from Peters as a passer to say we're going to just be fine with him being a statue and and, and holding the ball. And, and I think if you add Padilla in there, it gives the defense a lot more to think about. I mean, it's similar to the situation I talked about with K last year with J.J. Even though I thought that J- J.J. was a better passer and runner, I, I think that him – remember I said if you, if you just play the way you're playing with K, with J.J., you're a better football team, mm-hmm. right? You still don't have to throw the ball down the field, but in the running game he helps so much. You're a better football team with a guy that can run, and and then in the passing game, if you can make a couple plays here or there, it's a better you're a better team, yeah. right? And 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 people thought that was me saying, oh, Cade, JJ is so much better than Cade, or whatever the case may be. JJ's better for the team, especially if yeah. he can prove that he can play uh, as a front runner, right, ahead, and not make mistakes. And he's proven that, and and that's all I was saying the entire year. And, and you know, people, oh, you know, you're killing Cade. Am I killing Cade, or am I speaking the facts yeah. and 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 giving another perspective and option? Which it looks like at the onset, right now, it's a much better option just because he can also run. Yeah. So their their calculus last year was a bit different though, because they're like, man, I mean. Watching practice. Yeah, exa- you're you're like, exactly right. So, like, for me, I can, you know, I can have my opinion. Like, you know what I mean? But watching practice, I'm telling you right now, I'm a guy about empathy, right? I can put myself in the shoes. And if I have a family to feed, right, I'm, I'm on the proverbial hot seat, I guess, right? And I got a guy that's not messing it up. And I got a guy in practice that's trying stuff. One time it takes. <laughs> you don't got to do it. Tw- like, I remember, being in, I remember being a freshman and, you know, turned the wrong way on the run play, right? And as a kid, I'm thinking, that's not a big deal. I only did it one time. Why they not let me start? Because I did that one time. As a grown-up, I can't trust you with the food on my family's table. <laughs> you turned the wrong way one time. You're done. Hey man, they, we'll I, wait till next year for you to compete. They fired Paul Christ. Listen, that's Five what I'm saying. As a coach, if I see a freshman who I've never seen in a fire turn the wrong way one time, this ain't nothing to do with passing and reading defense. I don't give it, I don't care what you're doing. If you turn the way one wrong way one time, you are done for the rest of this year. Unless that guy gets hurt, you ain't playing. If I'm, if I'm the coach, you will wait until next year to compete in the spring. <laughs> You know what I mean, but the, it, obviously that might be a little bit extreme. Right, right. But that's what that's that, that's what you're up against when you when you take you know that, that my opinion is my opinion. I think he was a better player, but when you put empathy on it and say I'm not playing him, he threw it 
in one practice, he turned the wrong way twice or one time. One time, I told you only take once, but let's say twice. Turned the wrong way twice, one practice. Uh, the next practice, he threw back across the middle, threw a pick. Uh, the next practice, maybe this he threw a ball that got tipped and it wasn't his fault, and his steal was picked. Guess what? I still saw an interception. And that's three practices, and it's like, for me, Devin, after one, yeah, I know I'm good. We're okay, <laughs> right? But he was safe. He was but safe. to a coach with a lot of money on the line, yeah, you know that that's tough. That's super tough because, like you said, K was safe. But now we know this guy seems to be safe as well. That's right. Plus, he's safe. Plus, because he has all yeah. the options of making the throws we've highlighted and and, and making runs. One, and this last one we're gonna highlight. K doesn't make this play. Yeah, because that that one, that first one, that whole shot mm-hmm. was like, man, that's a play you make because JJ McCarthy is your, your quarterback. quarterback. Yeah, and absolutely. this is this is another one that you make because JJ McCarthy is your. So quarterback. pause it here. Um, I think we're gonna see the back view. Uh, when I was on the show, Coach Peterson was kind of hammering the table like. And I don't even know if he said it on on air, but he was as a coach. He Chris was saying Peterson. He, Chris Peterson, Coach Peterson. Mm-hmm. You remember Boise State, Washington did a great job. BCS bowls, all the, all the whole deal. Um, that's why I did the show with this past weekend. And he was saying he wants him to throw the hot. And and the thing is that this play is good because it the hot is built in. That guy is supposed to be free. That's not the offensive line. Right. The, the guy is supposed to be free, and he's supposed to throw the running back hot. But the thing is, young running back who's been hurt. Hasn't been in this situation as much, right? Probably practiced it once or twice, but you, it's not in you, right? The fire is hot. You're in Kenny Stadium. You're playing. He's a young guy. Um, I don't think he's quite prepared to receive the ball, right? And you don't want to loft the ball. I remember I got a call against Michigan State one year where I try to throw the ball away. I don't throw it in the ground hard enough. I kind of loft it a little bit, and the linebacker comes out of nowhere on a screen and, and picks it up off the turf and, and intercepts the ball. So, you, you, you don't want to get in that in-between where I'm kind of throwing it, I'm kind of not. And if he's not quite ready, that thing's going to bounce off his helmet and go to the back, and that's how Ohio, that's how Iowa wins games because of stuff like that. They put pressure on you. You you get to the right decision. The the the, the catcher, pass catcher, is not quite ready, bounces off, interception. Now they're making a comeback, and they're starting to pick up some momentum. He does a good job of not doing that, right? He sees that he may not be ready just a little bit. He knows he can get the edge, right? And once he gets the edge, he learns how to create. He's learning. He's getting better. And better. I think that's something he naturally had, being able to create when he's on the move. But he gets on the move on, on, on when he sees the defensive end, gets outside of him, and gives a nice soft lollipop type toss to to the running back who, who's Donovan Edwards. Now, I want to give some credit to Donovan Edwards because knowing the scramble drill is important. And just having a feel for where there's an open space that my quarterback is going to be able to see me, right? Getting friendly in open space. He does that. And, and it's not an easy throw because you got a guy in between. He drops it right over his fingertips and, and drops it in bounds before uh, Donovan Edwards is out of bounds. So this was a good play all around. But uh, you got to know, uh, you got to think of these players as humans, right? The, the, the robot throws it to the hot, right? The robot running back knows that the hot is right there ready. Well, the, the human... Right, sees things a little faster, or whatever the case may be, and has to go make a play, and he was able to do that. So take a look right here. Uh, hopefully it goes a little slower. Like, this is a free runner, Adam. This is a free runner right now. The, mm-hmm. the snap takes his eyes to the left a little bit, right? So that's important. I didn't even notice that at first. The snap takes his eyes to the left, and he sees this free runner, with, and Donovan Edwards hadn't even looked back yet. Make a play on him. Make a play on him. Now let's create. Let's find something. Let's create. Let's create. And he's able to find Donovan Nevers who leaked in the uh, back of the end zone. This is this is a, this is a very good play. I uh, mean, I like this play a lot. Um, and it's it's big because it's a touchdown, but the, the intricacies of, like, not necessarily not knowing the hot, right, making a, dis, a decision on – Will I be able, what, what are the what's the risk reward of me getting this hot to him? Will it even be a completion? Will it just be batted down? Oh, I can make a play with my legs. He does that, and and, and that's a good play. Yeah, I this, like this is this is something that when you can run, oh, I could beat this guy. I, you know what I mean? It's a certain amount of confidence you have, right? Oh, I can beat this guy on the edge. He's big. <laughs> Look at him. He don't <laughs> got a chance in hell. Look, he falling all down. What are you doing? Ninety one. Get up. Yeah, that's a again. You make that play because J.J. McCarthy is your quarterback. Yeah. That's that, nice. that That's. Uh, all right, not Donovan. You better catch that ball. Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, make the, he make the stretch and out catch, but the lollipop, he, he act like he going to drop it. it, it nice and that play. was the only sort of not sharp moment. And he still caught the ball. Yeah, yeah I thought he was, he was good. He, he was, was really good. I wish this was. I wish weeks. this was uh, running back Monday, Monday, Monday morning well, running you know, back. Dev, you don't have. I mean, like, we nah, just spend time. We, we go until we really <laughs> because we talked about it. And in my opinion, the weakest part of our 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 offense is a quarterback right now. Right, 
And so until we can sure that up and he starts to move into that position and not, and, and you know, it sounds weakest as if like he's not a good player. It's all no, relative. Yeah. It's, it's relative, right? So the receivers are seasoned, right? Especially led by Ronnie Bell. Seasoned receivers that are explosive. We don't got guys that suffer from drops and different things like that. So they played a lot of football off the line. We already know, right? Joe Moore Award and added a piece. You know what I mean? So they're solid. Do I have to talk about the running backs, right? We know. So by default, because our team in tight ends, I mean, I guess you can add tight ends in there, but I think Shun is a really good tight end. Yeah. And and obviously we had Eric All, but those that tight end group is really, really good. So when you look at it in totality, it's like, yeah, our worst player is our quarterback, but he's good, right? Mm-hmm. Our worst player, not you know, it sounds weird. Our worst our, our weakness, I guess. I don't know what to say. I'm glad you can see the air quote. I'm glad it's not on the radio so you can see, like, I'm really confused on what I'm trying to call it. But our least whatever is the quarterback. And, and Coach Parker said the same thing. He said that offense is, is put together on every single spot. And the one question mark technically was is the quarterback, and he continues to improve and make plays. So I think yeah. that's a good thing. When yeah. our quarterback is our weakest link, and we think he's really, really good. Well, I think you're really, really good, DG. I think you know that. I, I don't think that. I know. I, th- I, th- I, know, I know. I know. Is there's a reason why Joe. Class I know I'm a worker. Him. There's a reason why Joe's. Joe I know I'm a worker. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm a worker, and you know, I and I take advantage style. of opportunities, and I try to learn. And, and the thing is about me, I just always learn. I keep trying to learn and teach, and learn and teach, and learn and teach. And so the things that I learn, you don't even understand how long our coaches' calls are sometimes because I see a defense that I've never seen before, almost like like JJ, like whoa, whoa, what is this? Except I don't have to make a throw or make a decision. Yeah, yeah. I can just watch it. You know what I mean? So and I and you heard me on the phone, Coach Parker, trying to figure out what yeah. I was trying to do. And those are those are the conversations I have with these coaches that I meet with. Like, yeah, what see. are you doing what on defense? That? What are you doing on defense? Like, I've never seen this before. Is this a new thing? Is this just your thing? Where'd you learn this? You know what I mean? And so um, I've learned so much football these last two years, getting a chance to talk to these coaches. And football has changed. And so, like, the, all the older guys that are doing this and whatever, it's tough because if you don't do that and you don't get the opportunity to talk to these coaches or whatever the case may be or you're not in those circles, you don't learn that football is so different than it used to be on defense for sure. Obviously, offense, that's glaring. Everybody can see how different and all the cool things that you do on offense. But a lot, of, a whole lot is not talked about how that has forced defense to develop and how uh, intricate and, and, and talented these defense coordinators are in the way they play defense. Defense is hard now. Right? There's so many rules that are just for the offense to succeed, not to mention all these great offensive minds, not to mention all these great offensive players. And then you have defenses that still find a way to get it done. Um, the, the things they have to go through and do and teach for the kids to you, – you risk maybe the kid not playing as fast because you try to be so intricate that you know the defense, the offense gets confused. You might confuse your own guys. Um, it, it's been really cool learning new things about football because I love football. Football has been great to me. Uh, I, I, it's been it's been a really good adventure. For yeah. Sure. So you, I mean, Joe I know Clatt, you about that. I know you got some garbage. No, coming. I know. I was look. I'm, there's a reason Joe Clatt. Joe Clatt is a worker too, man. Right, he's a worker. And he's he's a pretty good. You know, but you can't. It's hard to cover every team like that. It's right? so hard. Yeah. So he you cheat cheat for for you for him on that. Yeah. You, teach, you know, you some people that if they call me, I won't help them out. But if Joe calls me, I got him covered. Yeah. You you teach Japanese kids. You're teaching the young go getters. Can you teach Reggie Bush? I knew. I told you, you some garbage you, coming. I, I called this before. Say, hey, and, 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 and <laughs> as color commentator, you want to first guess things, right? You don't want to be after the play, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Before the play starts, put your chips on the table and tell them what's going to happen, what would you do, whatever. I first guess that you have some garbage coming. I said, hey, man, I said you ain't about to trick listen, me. You got some garbage listen, coming, and the there man it was. said, I was going to win this game because the crowd is fired up. That was the analysis. So I'm saying... I know you're it's hard for him too. Listen, I, he do a lot of games, I'm a lot of teams. I don't want to see the brother. I, I, I want to see him ex- succeed. I want to see him be, be in a better. different capacity, huh? Yeah, you are terrible. Much, I mean, terrible. Ma- maybe you can be side by side. I mean, they have twenty people on the broadcast, the big noon show. Yeah. Anyway, what's one more? I mean, Especially I'm not saying I wouldn't want to be on there, but you know, you 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 know what you're doing. <laughs> you're a just, slick one. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, you're a slick one. I'm just saying. I think you could bring a lot to the table. I think you definitely can help Reggie out because I. You know, I want to see the brother. Dude, I think Reggie does fine. I, I don't get a chance to watch it a whole bunch because I'm always getting prepared for my game. But that was I think a I'm sure he does prediction. fine. It was a horrible prediction. Well, he just was wrong. <laughs> was Is it okay a, to be nah, wrong? Abby, be wrong, but have it be based on something. Yeah. No, not the crowd is fired up. Come on, man. Come on, man. Ain't nothing D- wrong DG with that. DG could have given you some stuff. I don't know, man. I might not have been able to. You don't know. And I, yeah, I don't want to do hindsight 2020. I don't know what I would have done. I probably might have said the same thing. No, you wouldn't. All right. That'll do it for another edition of the Monday Morning Quarterback Film Study. Remember, folks. That is not Sully. 
by, by sponsorship. By sponsorship. This video, the, the footage used in this video does not belong to us. For that reason, we do it for you, the people. It's strictly for your education, your entertainment, and the edification of you, the viewer, and the listener. You can always check us out if you want to, you know, be sure to make sure we can keep doing it like this video. Subscribe to the channel. You'll get a notification every time we add another piece uh, to the channel. Of course, you can always find us over on the MichiganInsider.com. One dollar gets you in your first month. After that, you become a full-paying member. You can get access to Paramount Plus 2. It is great bang for your buck. That is going to do it for us here on another edition of the Monday Morning Quarterback Film Study. Week 5, we'll be back next week, folks. See you then.